Hi, Dr. Paul here. Hi, Dr. Hello. Hi, Dr. Paul. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. 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 So welcome to the Daily Media Briefing. So as usual, Dr. Paul will be providing the latest updates on COVID-19. Again, we'll put it in English first, then in French, and we'll take the question from media right after. And we would appreciate if you mute your phone until the question period. So, bonsoir. Et bienvenue à tous sur notre point de presse quotidien. Comme d'habitude, avec Dr. Paul, vous mettez tous. On va donner dernière mise à jour sur le COVID-19. Présentez d'abord en anglais, puis en français, et répondrez ensuite aux questions des médias. Nous vous demandons de bien vouloir mettre vos téléphones en sourde bien jusqu'à faire des questions. So, we'd like to invite Dr. Paul to speak. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, bon soir, uh, bon tout le monde. I'm going to start with in English and I'll switch it into French. Um, just to give you a bit of an update, uh, to this to date, we have not had uh, any new cases, uh, although we've got uh, at least 250 uh, tests pending in our area, um, and um, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that as well. Uh, we have noticed, again, um, that uh, across Canada, The, the, the public health agency now has uh, estimated that about 50% of the cases that are occurring uh, are likely community-based and not related to travel. However, there's another 50% that are related to travel, and this is why, um, as of today, as you may have heard, the uh, Minister of Health federally has enacted uh, some quarantine powers, and uh, we're getting, we're just waiting for some more details. But our understanding is that uh, individuals arriving by plane from uh, any any uh, place out of Canada will be placed under mandatory quarantine around hotels at the arriving airports. Uh, we are not, um, uh, we're awaiting instructions of how that is going to proceed with people driving uh, into Canada from the United States in particular, uh, returning, and that's one of the things that worries us as well. We know that there's a big influx of uh, people that are uh, currently vacationing in, in, uh, in Florida or New York, and they're coming up. And one of our, a particular um, worry for us uh, really is the fact that I just found out this morning that about half the cases in New York, in, in the United States are in New York State, and, and that worries us and my colleagues across the 401 because we're across the river to uh, the United States. So, Uh, in many situations. So that is kind of uh, what is preoccupying us at this point in time. Uh, we also have, uh, uh, we will we'll be issuing our daycare guidance um, very shortly. Um, and again, we're just uh, proceeding to ensure that people get the message of self-isolation and we'll have some clarifications of self-isolation on our website. Je vais, dire, je vais, je vais tourner en français uh, pour vous dire que jusqu'à date, on a quatre cas Uh, les quatre cas qu'on avait il y a quelques jours, on n'a pas eu d'autres cas positifs, mais par contre, on s'attend à presque 300 uh, prélèvements qui sont en laboratoire actuellement. Et uh, on sait que le risque est plus élevé en Canada maintenant, le risque est haut à travers du Canada à cause que uh, on, le, le, les fédéraux ont annoncé uh, il y a quelques, quelques heures que à peu près 50% des cas euh, sont pas associés avec euh, des, euh, des voyages en dehors de Canada, donc euh, on pense que sont, sont vraiment intrinsiques à nos à la communauté. Il euh, faut dire aussi qu'il y a encore le, les 50% qui pourraient importer euh, le virus avec eux, euh, surtout euh, euh, aux frontières euh, quand ils viennent en auto et euh, en avion. Euh, Aujourd'hui, euh, le ministère fédéral de la Santé euh, a, a implémenté euh, les lois de la quarantaine. Donc, euh, toute personne qui vient euh, en aéroport euh, des, des pays étrangers euh, dehors de Canada, ils sont, en, ils sont mis en quarantaine obligatoire pour 14 jours au hôtel proche euh, des aéroports. On s'attend comment ça va trouver des détails, comment ça va se fonctionner pour les personnes qui viennent en auto, qui dépassent les frontières euh, canadiennes euh, américaines pour rentrer en Canada. Euh, ça nous inquiète un peu parce que, comme vous savez, euh, euh, Cornwall et la région euh, sud sur le 400 e euh, jusqu'au Kingston, jusqu'au euh, Belleville, euh, c'est proche euh, aux États-Unis et euh, surtout euh, ça nous inquiète aussi parce que ce matin on vient d'apprendre que euh, à peu près 50% de tous les cas aux États-Unis sont euh, dans l'État de New York. Donc ça nous inquiète un petit peu. 
Euh, donc, euh, euh, je, je, je suis content qu'on commence à avoir des mesures un peu plus strictes parce que n'oubliez pas que 50 encore des cas revient des États, probablement surtout. Donc, euh, il faut encore faire une expansion de tous nos plans. Finalement, nous avons aussi euh, mis euh, nos directives pour les garderies euh, avec la nouvelle euh, exclusion euh, et euh, la liste des, des commerces euh, essentiels. Euh, les garderies privées euh, qui prennent soin des cinq, des cinq ou moins des enfants euh, peuvent ouvrir. Par contre, nous avons émis des, euh, nous avons émis des euh, euh, des protocoles et euh, des, des, euh, toutes des, des euh, recommandations qu'il qu faut suivre afin d'assurer que, euh, une, les enfants ne sont pas malades quand ils rentrent et ils prennent les précautions appropriées. So, uh, that is, uh, just in, in terms of uh, our, our briefing, that's one of the things that um, I just wanted to get off in terms of just some regular, regular things. We're, we're really uh, right, right now uh, looking at um, essentially uh, Uh, what the next step would be, um, uh, really trying to ensure again that the message goes out there for self-isolation. We're seeing a lot of kids, um, you know, in the Cornwall area and SDNG area, um, you know, teenagers still not heeding to uh, social social distancing, and we need to be getting that message across to them. It will be imperative for the next couple of weeks for us to do this because we do expect to get more cases. Um, in, in terms of uh, the numbers that will be imported and perhaps community-based, but we want to do our best collectively to really decrease the amount and that surge, um, again, protecting all, all our vulnerable population. And so that's, that's really where we're, we're trying to, to, to now work. And, and people ask me, well, how long is it going to take for us to see, a, you know, the flattening of that curve or, you know, decreasing the slope of the curve or decreasing the, decreasing the acceleration of the number of cases? And it, it, it will take several weeks and it will take extensive measures to do so. We know so, you know that because other countries who have followed the measures right at the, where we are now in terms of the curve have been able to flatten the curve, namely Japan, Singapore. So those are the important things. Uh, juste en français pour dire que, uh, nous attendons, nous attendons dans les premières, les prochaines deux semaines d'avoir des autres cas. Euh, parce que, une, on a encore euh, des personnes qui reviennent des États-Unis. Euh, deux, on a 300 tests dans notre région qu'on attend les résultats, sont encore dans le laboratoire. Euh, et finalement, nous, euh, nous voudrons vraiment euh, essayer ensemble, avec, avec tout ce qu'on pourrait faire, avec tous les, les, les mesures qui sont en place et même les extensions de ces mesures, pour qu'on puisse rassurer qu'on voit une augmentation au niveau de la courbe euh, des, une, des, des nouveaux, nouveaux cas par jour. On voudrait vraiment baisser la courbe, on, on voudrait vraiment diminuer le taux d'accélération de, de cette courbe-là. Et là, c'est le temps de le faire, parce que quand on voit les autres régions comme Singapour et Japon, ils ont fait au même, au, au niveau de la même place qu'on est sur la courbe, Là, ils ont implémenté des mesures vraiment restrictives, vraiment extensives, comme, comme on, est en, on est en train de faire. Et on voit que, on voit que il y avait un plafondement, il y avait comme une diminution de l'accélération des cas. Donc, ça, c'est le but que nous avons euh, ensemble. The other question, I, and I have one question that was sent to me um, from, uh, I think it was Bill Kingston. I'm not sure if it was Bill, but I, I've got it in front of me here. I'm just going to look at it. I think it had to do with one of our first cases because it's been 14 days since we've had a first case. And right. so let me just look at it. Um, Bill, are you there? Yes, I am, yeah. That was your question, I think? Yes, it was. If I did my math correctly, for 14 days would be today yeah. from when the, the three contacts were at St. Lawrence College. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, the, first of all, the, all the 14 days, um, those individuals uh, after 14 days. Now, let's talk about the positive ones. The positive case, uh, after 14 days and, and being symptom free, we, our new guidelines now say that they can, they can, she can be, uh, uh, sent home. We haven't, we haven't done that yet. We're just, today's the 14th day. But the protocol is, if an individual is positive, um, uh, and, uh, has done the 14 day quarantine, uh, if at the end, at the end of the day the individual is fine, asymptomatic, which she is, Um, they, we will uh, release her from quarantine. And the same goes for the, uh, the contacts as well. Okay. So uh, I'm going to open up to some questions. Dr. Paul, 
Yes. Hi, Philip Landry, Morrisburg Leader. Um, yes. If I can get a clarification, on Monday you said that the Cornwall uh, testing center would be open sometime this week, as well as the Winchester one. Yep. However, I was contacted today by the Winchester Hospital saying that it's not opening this week, and they wanted clarification. They wanted a you know, an adjustment to the story that we already printed. So can you give me some insight of when that is going to open? Yeah. Well, we are. W what we're planning is we want to be ready as soon as possible. We, we mm -hmm. want them to be ready. And uh, the Cornwall and the Winchester one are, are, uh, are virtually ready. Uh, the, the Winchester one is, is ready to go. The, the rate limiting factor, we had estimated when I, at the beginning of the week that likely would be opening by the end of the week. Uh, so it's not erroneous what you said, um, but what we're doing uh, is we're basing it on the emergency room um, use or, or you know surcharge. Uh, at this point, we're working with the hospital on a day-to-day -day basis to assess the capacity in the emergency room. So the triggers are going to be uh, community-wide you know infection or numbers of people being sick and the emergency room use. So we're not there at that point uh, the, y there yet, but we're taking it day by day. As soon as we judge that the surge is enough that we need to start decongesting the emergency room, that's when we're going to click it in. Okay, so, great. Thank so you. that's the clarification I'm making. That's why I had said initially we're looking likely at the end of the week, trying to guesstimate that, oh, perhaps the emergency room will, then that will be a kind of a trigger. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Okay. Paul, uh, Dr. Paul, yeah. Dr. Yeah. Paul uh, uh, Nelson Zambergen from Nation Valley News. Yes. Do you have any information on... Um, they closed the uh, en route yesterday at Ingleside uh -huh. for a day. There was some kerfuffle over an employee causing some kind of a scare or something. Can you give a little more information on that? Yes, I can. We were contacted about that. Um, essentially, it was a false alarm. I can tell you that. And uh, it was purported that an individual uh, had po tested positive, never was tested. And so uh, I spoke to the CEO last night. Of en route and clarified that we have no record of any positive cases that work there. So that was that was it. We don't have like a stress. There was we have no record of any case uh, of a positive individual working at the en route and in, in uh, Ingleside. Well, do you have, is it your understanding that somebody said that they were positive or something like that? Yes, that's our understanding. Okay. And as a reaction, which as a reaction, they closed the place down. Right. Dr. Paul. Uh, Dr. Paul, Nick Sieber, Cornwall Seaway News. I just wanted yes. to ask, what will your health unit's role be in enforcing today's order from the federal government about the mandatory quarantines? That, that's what exactly what I'm, I'm awaiting. I'm awaiting now to see. The, it was just issued at 2 o'clock this afternoon. So we, I, we're waiting. We're going to have a teleconference likely later on this afternoon, well, actually this evening, with the ministry to see how that implies, what implications we have with that, because that's a federally, that's a federal um, in, you know, a federal sort of jurisdiction. So it's, it's, it, that's what I was. That's why I was wondering out loud what we, w where we would be. The ones flying in is, no, is a no-brainer because they're going to really, well, from what I'm seeing, is they're going to be quarantined in hotels. Uh, it's the ones that are going through the border. So that's what we're waiting to see. What kind of uh, levers we have? What kind of a legal implication that we have at the local level? Dr. Paul. Yes. Greg Chamberlain for the Tribune Express and. E yes, Greg. Yeah, you mentioned uh, concern regarding uh, New York City as uh, with a large number of infections there. Is there a concern that any of the snowbirds driving home from Florida and maybe passing through New York City might end if they're if they're uninfected when they, when they leave Florida that they might pick up the infection as they go through New York City? That is exactly my concern. That is exactly my concern. So um, it has to do, in particular, New Yorkers coming up, but people driving through. You know, if you're a lot of the snowbirds are in Florida, they can arrive through the state of New York, New Jersey, and even Florida itself. You know, they could leave Florida and be asymptomatic and start developing symptoms as soon as they get here, because you know, uh, Florida is a hot a hot spot as well. So yes, we're very concerned about that, and that's why I'm anxious to see what kind of measures are going to be taken at the border, at the Canadian border, when they're crossing over. As in Dr. Paul, you said. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. As in, yes, Greg. And whether it be people at the border to do some kind of a screening, and that, people coming that, across, or what? That's the, and those are the details that I like to have because I, I would I would hope there would be, um, you know, a more stringent process. Um, like I said, the airplane, no brainer. But at the at the uh, various points of entry by on the road, I I wonder what they're going to be doing. And we don't I don't have any of those details at this point. Thank you. 
Thank you. Dr. Paul, you said you had uh, 250 tests pending in in the five counties. Uh, yep. You've said before in a previous call that you, you did about 65 tests. The Hawkesbury Clinic did half of the people that showed up, about 39. So I count from all that there's about three, at least 350 tests that have been done in this district so yep. far? Yeah, we're looking at something like that, yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. And we're, we're, the other thing, too, that I, I, I'm not counting is the ones, because a lot of people, some people who lived close to Ottawa went to the Ottawa, uh, Ottawa you know, <laughs> assessment center. So I'm not counting those. So my message is that, you know, we got, you know, just because we have four cases doesn't mean we only have four cases. Right. Dr. Paul? Oui. Uh, Denis Babin, I'm going to ask my question in English. Um, I would, do you want to that, speak, reply in both? We took a good up on that, Andrew. Well, oh, it's, it's all good. Um, okay. The uh, assessment center in uh, Oxbury has been open, well, it's been up and running for three days now. Uh, yeah. How many people have you assessed so far? Uh, Oh boy, I'm gonna off, off the top of my head. The first day it was 72, and the second day it was around 30 something. I don't have the, the numbers. Out. We can I can provide them for you tomorrow. I I, I get the I got the report last night, but I don't remember the numbers. There, it wasn't as many as I thought that we would. The first day was more than the second day, and I haven't so, got today's yet. So over 100, that would be. I would say close to 100. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not more than that. Any other uh, questions, uh, Dr. Paul? I have one more. Which okay, we'll have we'll is, do is, we'll do one last one. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, um, because the health unit also covers Aquasasni and Aquasasni being sort of a tri nation yep. status, um, how has the cooperation been so far in that? Because of the movement across the border, because I know uh, Franklin and St. Lawrence counties are very low in the number of confirmed tests. I mean, St. Yeah. Lawrence County just had their first test confirmed yeah. today. Mm -hmm. uh, Franklin County, I think, has two. Yeah. Um, those yeah. are the, but there's the, there's a lot of fluidity in the border in that yeah. area. So yeah. uh, can you speak to how the cooperation has been between Oh, yes. Well, and I can Alcohol. tell you that, sure, I'm glad you asked the question because I have, I have the answer. Um, the, the, uh, uh, well, first of all, we're always in contact uh, when I do any anything with the mayors or anything with uh, you know po political sort of individuals. I, I, I have almost daily or, or at least bi-weekly teleconferences with them. Uh, Chief Benedict is on the call, so I consider him part of our you know our group anyway. Uh, however, at a at a more day-to-day -day basis, uh, Keith Leclerc, uh, who is the director of health, is actually on our uh, emergency management team, so he partakes. Uh, with every emergency management call that we take on a daily basis with us, we're working with them uh, to look at their, their, their cross-boundary issues. We're actually supporting them. If they need to create an assessment center, we're supporting them as well. So they're, they're actually part of our incident management team. So okay. they're working with us tremendously. We, so they have challenges because, you know, their, their health, I don't know for, for a lot of you who don't know, their health department is in Quebec. The parking lot is New York, just to sort of give you that, you know. And we're working with the, we're working with the Canadian side. The Quebec side is also under my jurisdiction, so we're they're doing very well. They they're always in constant constant communication with their New York counterparts as well. Um, the trans border crossing was a bit of an issue because uh, if you recall, uh, there was a there was a there's a freeze in non essential travel across the border, and there are some people that live in New York but work in Quebec. And vice versa, and so those those healthcare professionals are exempt. So so far so good, but we're keeping an eye on them because we know that um, First Nations are are actually more prone to complications and have a lot of high rate of chronic disease as well. So no, they're just part of our team, day to day basis, part of our team. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. With this, I will end the teleconference, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.